it was through But since when has impossible ever stopped you? Friday's disappointment is Sunday's empty tomb Since when has impossible ever stopped you? Is the sound of dry bones rattling This is the phrase Make a dead man walk again Hope in the grave I'm calling out I'm gonna live, gonna live again This is the sound of dry bones rattling Stirring something new You're not gonna run out of miracles anytime soon
Stop working, even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Keep 
COVID-19, God's Curse. Are these the end times?
How do I navigate other people's opinions? These are the questions that need answers. What do we do with all the voices we hear in our head? Anybody else out there, like you hear a lot of voices in your head, and you're like, man, which, which voice do I trust? Which voice do I follow? Maybe the, uh, the, the story that stands out the most to me on this was a few years ago, we were living, uh, Chris and I, we were living in a different city and we sensed that God was calling us to Huntsville, uh, but it wasn't always clear, right? Like sometimes I just feel like my mind was saying like, yeah, like that's what we're supposed to do. And then sometimes I was like, no, that's not what we're supposed to do. Or sometimes it's like, man, I, I think Jesus is leading us to do that. Or no, Jesus is leading us to stay here. And it was just, it was just confusion. I heard all these just these different thoughts and these different voices in my head. And it was confusing. Like, how do we know which voice to trust? How do we, how do we discern the voices that we hear in our mind? And the reality is there are a lot of voices that we hear, right? We hear the voice, um, our own, just our own thoughts, our own conscious, you know, just thinking to us, uh, the, the thoughts we think up here. We hear the voice of maybe loved ones or family members, the voices of friends, the voice of a spouse or children. We hear the voice of media. We hear the voice of our uh, opinions that we see on social media and there's just a lot of voices speaking into our life and so what do we do about that how do we know which voice to trust i shot a special little video you'll have to excuse me it was on my phone it's a little low quality but i hope it i hope it illustrates what it's like trying to listen to the right voice this was an illustration that i uh, i had a, a a, a, a volunteer in the kids ministry when I was a child do this when I was a child and it stuck with me for all of these years and I think it's a really cool illustration of what it looks like to listen to the right voice so let's go ahead and see that illustration right now all right what's up everybody we're about to do a little exercise I have hidden a prize for Sophia right here but it's hidden Sophia is blindfolded I'm going to be whispering to Sophia telling her how she can find the prize. And as you can see, we've created an obstacle course. Now, Sophia's sisters are gonna do everything they can to distract Sophia from hearing my voice. So let's see how this goes. You girls ready? Yeah. Zoe, are you ready? No. Yeah. All right. All right, distractor. Distractors, are you ready? Yes. No, do not look up that table, get down. All right, start making some serious noise. First of all, thank you, Sophia, Sela, and Zoe, kind of, for your help. And I think it illustrates the passage of scripture that I want us to look at today. We're going to look at the words of Jesus in John chapter 10. Let's begin in verse 14. John chapter 10, beginning in verse 14. I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep and they know me. Just as my father knows me and I know the father, so I sacrifice my life for the sheep, uh, foreshadowing what he'd be doing on the cross. Verse 16, I have other sheep too, referring to the non-Jewish people, the Gentiles, us, most of us watching this. Uh, I have other sheep too that are not in the sheepfold. I must bring them also. They will listen to my voice and there will be one flock with one shepherd. Let me say that one more time. They will listen to my voice. If you're watching this online, if you got the guts to do it, just say it out loud. They will listen to my voice. Now, if you're in the mood to talk out loud, if you're watching it to somebody else, look at them and tell them, let's buckle up. We're going to explore this and we're going to move quick. Number one, we all hear lots of voices in our head. That is just the reality. We all hear lots of voices in our head. And when I say voices in our head, I don't necessarily mean that you actually have, like hear conversations happening up here. That's not what it looks like for me, at least. When I say I hear lots of voices in my head, really what I mean, there's a lot of competing thoughts 
floating around up here. Uh, and just maybe a great example that's very relevant to what we're dealing with today is imagine all the thoughts that you have surrounding COVID-19 or uh, the current situation with racism in America. Right, for instance, you might see a social media post of maybe a friend. And as soon as you see it, all of a sudden you hear these voices, right? Like, hey, I agree with that. That's awesome. Yes. Or what are they thinking? What's wrong with those people? If only they knew, you know, we, you know, we just hear these different voices and, and some of the voices are loud and angry. Some of the voices are the voice of compassion. Some of the voices are, are, are loving and warm. Some of them are just cold. Some of the voices we hear are just these judgmental thoughts. And again, we've already mentioned like these voices come from all the different places. Some of we hear the voice of just our own experience speaking into something uh, when we see a social media post that we agree or disagree with, or we hear the voice of loved ones, or we hear the voice of somebody we strongly dislike, or we we hear the voice uh, perhaps of the Holy Spirit, or perhaps we hear the voice of the the enemy just just trying to lead us astray. So what do we do about this? Now, I do want to say this, and this is probably something that could be said at every sermon. It is so important. When we come to God's word, we need to be sure that we're coming with an open mind and an open heart. Let me say that one more time. When we come to God's word and we want to figure out how to do things God's way, please do not come in here with a know-it-all attitude. Please do not be thinking like, hey, I already know all the answers or I already know which voice to listen to. I only listen to the right voice. Because if there's one thing I know about listening to the wrong voice is that the, long, the wrong voice usually feels a lot like the right voice. Sometimes, I mean, we just cling to a wrong voice and we think we're clinging to the right voice, but it's not. It's not. So with that said, I just want to be sure that we're all coming to God's Word this morning with an open mind and an open heart, checking ourselves to just see like, hey, am I listening to the right voice? Am I listening to the voice of Jesus? Let's look at number two. The second thing I want us to look at is how do we know which voice we can trust? If we're hearing lots of voices and lots of people and lots of things are speaking into our life and how we make decisions and how we process things, how do we know which voice we can trust? And let me say that getting this right is really important. We need to know that we're listening to the right voice. If we're listening to uh, the wrong voice, it can lead us astray. In fact, many of my regrets in life are when I listen to the wrong voice up here. Can I get an amen? Anybody out there, you listen to that voice, you should not have listened to it, and you're still paying for it. Uh, right? Many times we're like that, and we're just thinking, like, why did I give in to that voice? Oh, of course, uh, Jesus actually warned us about this. In John 10.10, 10, I'll give you a paraphrase. Jesus says that, that the devil, Satan, evil, really comes for only one reason, to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus has come that we may have the abundant life. And both of these are speaking into your life. There's that old cartoon that many of us are familiar with where there's a person and there's a little like a little demon right here and a little angel right here kind of whispering into this person's life. And honestly, I, I think that's not a horrible way of thinking about that. Some of the voices we're, we're hearing, are, we've just got to know like, hey, we, we are hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit, but we're also hearing the enemy's voice. Now, throughout the scripture, it tells us that, hey, be aware of, of the devil's schemes. Like we're not unaware of how he operates. And we know that he would love to, to sideline us. He would love to get us uh, distracted. He'd love for us to fall into the trap of hate and greed and selfishness and all those sort of things. So it's really, really important that we learn to know which voice we can trust. Going back to the video of, of, of me and the kids, you know, one of, one, of the, one of the children was trying to distract the child. And I was trying to give uh, clear instructions on how they can find the prize you could say that one sibling was trying to steal, kill, and destroy. They did not want that child. They did not want their sister to get the prize. But of course, I wanted uh, my daughter to get the prize. So I think it's a good way to think about it. In fact, I think, honestly, the best question we can be asking this right now is not so much about all the voices we hear or which voice can we trust, but I, I want to submit to you the best question we could be asking right now is, how do we discern the voice of Jesus? How do we discern the voice of Jesus with so many things speaking into us, so many thoughts and competing ideas that we hear in our head? How do we know what truly comes from Jesus? Well, the best way to be able to discern what we hear 
is through Scripture. Uh, let me read a few, a few for you, actually. Um, let's begin in 2 Timothy. Let's see if I can remember how bookmarks work. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. If you're looking for a Bible verse to memorize this week, this would be an awesome one to memorize. 2 Timothy 3.16. It says, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful. Well, what's it useful for? Listen, to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. And Paul continues by verse 17. He says, God uses scripture to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. You know, the reality is if we, you know, when we're hearing all these thoughts and, hey, what direction should we go in and what should we believe? Like, we need a compass, right? We need a map. We need to know what true north is. You know, have you ever been uh, hiking or out in the woods and you're like, hey, I'm really sure, I'm 100% sure that is north. Like, I know that is north. And like, you, you know, you're, you're trying to convince somebody else, like, no, I know that's the right direction. And then somebody pulls out a compass and sure enough, it's that direction, you know, and you're like, oh man, okay, I've, I've, I really thought it was that way. Well, in the same way with life, we think like, hey, I'm pretty sure God wants me to do this. God wants me to believe that. God wants, God's telling me to, to do this or do that. But we need to pull out the compass. We need to pull out the map. We need to pull out the thing, our, our, our north, our, what points us in the direction of true north. And I, I love what it says. It says it corrects us when we're wrong and it teaches us to do what is right. Because remember, the wrong voice often feels like the right voice. But then we open up God's word and we start realizing, wait a minute, wait a minute. I thought north was that direction. But the scriptures actually tell me like, no, the, the truth is that direction. And it corrects us. It trains us. It changes us. It changes us. Now, uh, I, I love one of my favorite examples of this actually comes from the scripture. Uh, we, we see the story in the book of Acts. Let me turn there now. In the book of Acts... Uh, just a cool, cool story. Uh, let me find it here. The book of Acts. It's the story of the Bereans. Do you remember this story? And in the story of the Bereans, it comes in Acts chapter 17, verse 11. And Paul is, comes up to this, these people, the Bereans. And Paul's telling them about Jesus. And the Bereans love God, but they had not heard of Jesus. And so, you, you know, all of a sudden, the Bereans are hearing this new voice. They're like, uh, I don't know, this guy, it, it's, uh, there's something familiar about what he's saying, but we, we don't know of Jesus. We don't know who this is. Look what it says, uh, Acts chapter 17, verse 11. And the people of Berea were more open-minded than those in Thessalonica, and they listened eagerly to Paul's message. Check this out. They searched the scripture day after day to see if Paul and Silas were teaching the truth. I love this. The Bereans, they were hearing a new voice. They weren't sure. Like, is this, is this a voice we should listen to? So what did they do? They started searching the scripture. Now, I, I want to say something, and this is a really big warning for all of us. There is a big danger in searching, or I'm sorry, in listening to the voice that we believe is the Holy Spirit telling us something, but not checking that with the scripture. One of the greatest, perhaps the greatest painful, the most great, the most painful thing that's happened to me in ministry is when a dear, beloved friend of mine who loved God's word, but then he started telling me that he was hearing voices and he heard what he believed was the Holy Spirit of God telling him to begin doing something. And the Bible, the scripture actually would have said, no, that is false. That is wrong. Do not do that thing. But my friend decided to put this aside, not worry about the scripture, and listen only to the voice that he was so sure was the Holy Spirit. He knew that was north. And if he would have looked at the scripture, he would have realized that was north. Well, it led him down a dark path. One, it hurt me. It hurt a lot of other people. It hurt people that he loved. And even to this day, the man does not walk in truth. He believes that is north and that is what is following. But if he would have continually listened to the scripture like he used to, he would see that it was no longer truth. And honestly, that was a smart guy. He was a smart guy. 
but he's separated listening to God from God's word. And if we do that, we can start going down the wrong path. And it's just not a, it's not a problem that only he faces. It's a, it's a temptation that every single one of us has faced, which is why it's so important that we check the voices that we believe are the voice of God with what scripture actually teaches. Now, another big warning on this, it's easy to open up the Bible and to take something out of context and say, oh, well, the Bible says I should do this, but that's not what the Bible's saying. Like, read the paragraph before it, read the paragraph after, look at the context. And if we would do that, we, were making sure, we would make sure that we're not twisting Scripture. In fact, one of the best ways that you can know that a Bible verse is saying what you think it's saying, because again, it can be really tempting. If, you, if you're really set that that's north and that's the direction you want to go in, you can kind of you know, shake up the compass a little bit to try to make it say what you want it to say. Don't do that. Don't do that. So one of the ways that you can make sure that you're understanding Scripture correctly is by reading commentaries. Read people who've studied this and have written about the Bible verse. And again, like, listen, we're, we're not, we don't want to just take one man's opinion. You know, if God's telling us to do something and some man says, you know, that's wrong. Well, hey, we, we, listen, on, that, that, we're going to do it God's way. But with that said, if we start reading commentators and we see several commentators say that, hey, this verse, you, you, you know, you thought it meant this, but, but all, you know, the majority of commentators saying, no, it does not mean that. And here are the reasons why it actually means this. Well, we should, we should have the humility to listen to these people. They, too, have the Spirit of God living in them. And if you're the only one who thinks north is that direction, and everybody's looking at the compass, and they say north is that direction, my friends, there could be, you could be buying into a lie. So look at commentators. Uh, my favorite one is BibleHub.com. I, I've spent a lot of money on Bible study tools over the years in seminary and since. A lot of money. But what you can access for free on BibleHub.com is 99% as good as everything I got. And you don't have to register. You don't have to sign in. You don't have to do any of that stuff. Just go over to BibleHub.com, type in the, the verse that you're trying to study, you're trying to understand better. Uh, it'll, it'll pull up some translations of it. Scroll down to the bottom and you'll find all the commentators. This is a wonderful way to study the scripture, to be sure that we're checking out the voices that we hear in our head, to be sure that it's genuinely the voice of Jesus. Another very practical thing that you can do is that yeah, in addition to scripture, we it's good to get uh, other people who love Jesus, who love the scripture, and who love you to speak into what we're trying to decide or what we're trying to believe. Just a really simple exercise is um, you, you could just, on a piece of paper, say, um, I'm going to do or believe, fill in the blank, because of, fill in the blank. I'm believing, fill in the blank, because, fill in the blank. And then take it to one of these people who loves Jesus, they love scripture, and they love you, and just say, hey, does this check out? Am, am, I, am I going crazy here? Like, am I listening to the wrong voice? Or does this seem really reasonable? Does this seem like this is something that's pleasing to God, that's, that's honestly, that's a great way to get someone to check your math, if you will. Um, I've been part of projects before where, uh, where we had to be sure that our decisions were really accurate. So there were, uh, some, uh, at a different place, uh, we were working on some safety things and some things that would be hanging on the wall. Well, I wanted to be sure that I had everything screwed in just right, because if it wasn't screwed in right, it could fall and damage the thing that we were hanging up or maybe even fall on somebody. So what did we do? Well, I went and I made sure everything was tight. And then a second person came behind and they made sure everything was tight as well. Honestly, this is a great way to think about making some of life's biggest decisions. We check the scripture, but then we ask somebody else to say like, hey, here's what I'm thinking. Here's what the scripture that I've been studying says. Can you check my math on this? Be brilliant, a brilliant, brilliant way uh, to be sure that we're seeking God and that we're listening to the right voice. All right, number three. After we hear the voice of Jesus and we're sure that hey, we're discerning that, hey, this is what Jesus wants us to do or believe on this certain thing, what do we do? Well, uh, obedience, like obedience is really, really important, right? Just knowing what we're supposed to do is not, not good enough in of itself. We need to obey. Uh, let me give an illustration like this. Um, we have, we have a, a, a finished basement in our home. In fact, that's where I am right now. And... 
sometimes uh, like Krista and I will be upstairs and we want to tell the we want to tell the girls something and they're downstairs playing or watching TV or something so uh, kind of the top of our stairs I'll yell down and I'll say you know hey Sophia say that go you know do this or, or come up here well imagine they're being really loud and imagine they're all kind of squealing and just playing with toys and the TV's on really loud and, and let's just say they hear my voice coming from upstairs and they hear me calling out to them well that's awesome fantastic that they heard my voice but if I'm asking them to come up and clean their room just hearing my voice isn't quite enough right like I want them to do something about that I want them to come up there and clean their room just hearing my voice not quite enough we want them to be obedience obedient uh, as well let me read this scripture uh, that talks about the importance of of obedience. Romans chapter 2, verse 13. Romans chapter 2, verse 13. For merely listening to the law doesn't make us right with God. It is obeying the law that makes us right in His sight. All right? So just, just listening to the law, uh, doesn't uh, listening to God doesn't make us right in His sight, but rather obeying. Now, this is actually really intriguing because what Paul is laying out for us in Romans chapter 2 is that obeying the law poses a really big problem for you and me. Because has anybody here ever disobeyed God? Has anybody ever done something, you say, hey, God was leading you to do this and you decided to do that instead? Yeah, we all have many times, myself included, just so we're clear. But look what Paul says. I love, I love what Jesus has done for us. Look at Romans chapter 3, beginning in verse 23. Romans chapter 3, beginning in verse 23, and we're going to go all the way through 25. For everyone has sinned, okay? So what we just read is that, hey, hearing God, that's good. We also need to obey. But Paul's telling us something that, honestly, we already know. We've all sinned. We've all disobeyed God. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet God, in His grace, freely makes us right in His sight. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty for our sins. For God presented Jesus as a sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life by shedding his blood. Here's what it's saying. The only way that you and I can hear the voice of God and do what he's telling us to do is because Jesus was obedient first. You and I, we've all sinned. We all fall short. In fact, the reality is kind of going back to the illustration of my kids downstairs playing with their toys and the TV's on loud. Uh, many of us, we would just be fine just playing with our toys and watching TV. But God's calling out to us. And the only way that we can be obedient to God is because Jesus, the God the Son, was first obedient. And because of what Jesus has done for us, we can be seen righteous. I, I share this all the time. This is really the heart of the gospel. It's imagine just your track record, right? And, and just imagine there's a piece of paper with your name on it, and it's got all your sins on there. And then imagine another record, and this is the record of Jesus, and Jesus' name is at the top, and all of his sins are on there. And there are no sins because he's never sinned. What Jesus did for us on the cross is that Jesus came over, and where it had your name and your sins, he, he writes over your name, and he puts his own name. And where it has his name and and where it lists none, of, where he has never sinned, he scratches out his name and he writes your name. And when God the Father looks at you, he no longer sees you and he no longer sees your old record of all your sins. He now sees the record that has your name on it and it has no sins. Because when, Jesus, when God the Father sees you, he sees the finished work of his son, Jesus, on that cross where Jesus paid for all of your sins if you've placed your faith in Jesus. Anybody out there grateful like I am that Jesus paid for our sins on that cross? Are you grateful that when God the Father sees you, He no longer sees your messed up, jacked up track record. He sees the track record of His perfectly obedient Son. Going back to me yelling down at the kids to go clean their room. I should be really careful. Not yelling. Asking them. Trying to speak above the TV to go clean their room. Now, thinking about the gospel, of course I want them to obey. I want them to obey. Like I, I've asked them to go clean their room. I want them to obey. But I, I, don't, I don't want them to go clean their room thinking to themselves, if I clean my room, then my dad will love me. 
If I, if I clean my room, then, then dad will take care of me. If I clean my room, then dad uh, will accept me. I would be heartbroken if I ever heard them say that. If I ever said, like, daddy, I cleaned my room. Do you love me now? That never, that never hurt. You know what I, when, when, when my children hear my voice asking them to go clean their room, I, I don't want them thinking, how can they earn my love? I want them to think, man, daddy loves me so much. Of course I'm going to go clean my room. I see what dad's done for me. He's not going to have to ask twice. I'm going to run up there and I'm going to go clean my room because daddy loves me. Daddy bless me. Daddy accepts me. Man, daddy's a good daddy. I, I want to do the things he says. I know I can trust daddy. So when we think about what Jesus has done for us and the fact that the, this idea that we can hear the voice of God at all is only because Jesus was obedient to God and because, God, uh, because Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to us and that's how we can hear the voice of God today. So how do we respond to that? When we see all that God has done for us, I think the appropriate response is um, through gratitude with a changed heart. And we see what Jesus has done for us and we say, okay, God, I want, I want to do it your way. I want to do it your way. And so I think two ways that we could apply this message today, when we just think about the voices in our head and how do we listen to Jesus, I think two ways that we can apply. Number one, I, I would like for you over the next three days to track how much you're listening or watching or reading the news and social media for three days. Track how much are you listening to the news or social media or late night TV shows that have a bent towards politics. Just track it for three days. Track how much are you listening to the voice of social media and the news and these sort of things. And then also for three days, track how much time are you, you reading the scripture? Because I want all of us to create an environment in our lives where it's going to be most likely for us to be able to hear and interpret the, the, the voice of God. And the reality is, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of us, if over the next three days, we're spending, you know, 18 hours on social media and on news sites and on TV shows that have a bent towards the politics. But we might only be spending 10 minutes in Scripture. Now, I want you to think about that for a second. If you're spending way more time listening to news and social media than you are in God's Word, you're not... You're not really stacking the odds in your favor of hearing and interpreting and acting upon God's voice. So I'd like to see that change in my life. I'd like to see it change in your life. So for three days, just do a little exercise. Track how much time are you spending on social media and news versus how much you're spending in God's word. The second thing I want to invite you to join me to do is that this coming Wednesday, we're going to begin 21 days of prayer, fasting, and the Bible. We typically do 21 days of prayer and fasting at the beginning of the year, and we did it this year as well. But with everything going on in the world, and just all of the division, and all of the hurt, and all of the pain, and all of the confusion, and everything that's going on, I think now is a really good time to refocus on Jesus. So I would like for you to invite me this Wednesday, beginning 21 days of prayer, fasting, and the Bible. Just happens that the book of John, my favorite book of the Bible, I think, has 21 chapters. And so each day we're going to read one chapter of scripture together. And then I'd also encourage you to give up something for 21 days. Perhaps a certain amount of days a week you give up lunch or, or a, a certain type of food or beverage, these sort of things. And every time you feel the prompting to, to have that, that food or that drink or that lunch, just use the opportunity to pray. And I've written out a prayer guide. And you can find that prayer guide and some instructions uh, wherever you're watching this. There should be a link on how you can access the prayer guide. And again, that begins this coming Wednesday. Why don't you join me with this? And for 21 days, let's do our best to refocus on the voice of Jesus and how we can apply that to our current situation. I want to I close with one last big thought. Some may be watching this. And you're thinking, I don't think I ever hear the voice of God. I want you to see what Acts chapter 2 verse 38 says. Peter replied, each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. If you're watching this and you think, I, I, don't, I, don't, think I, I don't think God speaks to me. I don't, think, I don't think I hear the Holy Spirit working in my life. Well, I want to ask you, 
Have you turned from your sins? Have you repented of your sins? Have you turned towards Jesus? Have you made him the Savior of your life? Have you made him the Lord of your life? If not, why don't you do that right now? Romans chapter 10 verse 9 says that if we confess out loud that Jesus is our Lord and we believe in our heart that God the Father raised him from the dead, you will be saved from your sins. You will receive the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive eternal life. Wherever you're watching this, why don't you just confess right now, Jesus, you're the Lord of my life. I turn from my old ways. I turn towards you. I believe the testimony of you is true, that you died for my sins. And on the third day, after defeating sin and death, you rose from the grave and you live today and you're coming back for us. And for those of us who have placed our faith in Jesus, we will spend all eternity with him in heaven. If you feel like you don't hear the voice of Jesus, if you don't feel like you don't hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, check yourself. Ask yourself, have I genuinely turned from my sins and made Jesus the Lord of my life? That doesn't mean we don't continue to struggle with our sins, but it means that there's something inside of us that wants to put off our sin and we want to do it God's way with all that we have. My friends, we all hear a lot of voices in our head. Let's listen to the voice that we can trust, the voice of Jesus. Let's check that voice with Scripture. and Let's do what He's calling us to do. Let's pray. Father, we're grateful for the way You love us. And for everyone who's listening to this right now, God, I pray that your spirit would come upon us in a special way. Would you show us, is there any area in our life where we think we're following you, but we're not? Is there anywhere where we're saying that, hey, that's north, but no, actually north is in a different direction. God, would you break down those strongholds in our life where we think we're right, but we're not? God, would you give us the humility to, to examine your word with an open heart and an open mind? It's just a spirit of prayer, God, saying your will be done in my life as it is in heaven. God, I pray for all of us that we would hear the voice that we can trust, your voice, that we would do the things that you're calling us to do. And we pray these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, before we get out of here, a couple really important things that I want to share. Uh, uh, this Wednesday, as I already mentioned, there is, um, we're going to begin the 21 days of prayer, fasting, and the Bible. Please join me in that. You can find a link to download the prayer guide wherever you're watching this video. And the other big thing I want to say is be sure you fill out a digital connection card before you get out of here. And then also I'd like to invite you uh, for our time of offering to listen to God, um, talk to God about it, listen to God, and do whatever God's telling you to do. You're never going to regret doing it God's way. And the best way to give back to God here at Essential is through our online giving. And the final thing I'll say is that our Sunday morning services have resumed. Uh, we have 9.30 and 11 o'clock. We've not started children's ministry quite back, uh, back quite yet, but your children are more than welcome to come and join you uh, in the auditorium. Uh, we're, uh, we're still doing social distancing and doing everything we can to keep people safe and healthy. But you're more, more than welcome to join us for an in-person service whenever you feel like the time is right for you and those that you might come with. If you have any reservations about coming to an in-person service, by all means, please continue watching online. And I just want you to hear my heart on this. You're not a bad Christian if you continue watching online services for a while. We want you to make a decision that you're comfortable with. And there's no need for you to rush uh, back into an in-person service if you feel like it, it's, it's dangerous for you or for others to do that. So uh, we, we, we think that online services are, are, actually doing, are actually really good. And we think that things are going really well well with this. So please continue participating online until you feel like you've, uh, it is a, it's comfortable and it's the right thing. It's the safe thing for you to do to re-enter into in-person services. So with all that said, I want you to know that I love you. I pray for our church frequently. If there's ever anything that I can do for you, please don't hesitate to reach out. I hope you guys have a great week and may God bless each one of you.